Elecraft reveals a brand new pocket held, handheld HF transceiver, something for the ultimate go kit, the KH1, the Kilo Hotel One. We're gonna talk about it right now. Okay, honestly, I think you guys are gonna watch me order this. Okay, here's the, here's the KH1. Kyle, AA0Z Kyle shared this to me earlier. Actually, I had found it a little bit before that, just a little short time before that, and I was like, oh, I should make a video on that, and then I got sidetracked, I got distracted, and then he put it in to Discord, and I'm like, well, crap, now I gotta really make a video about it. <laughs> the KH1 transceiver from Elecraft, let me bring this down here where I can actually see it. There it is right there. This is brand new with a KH Log1, KH PD1, and AX1 sold separately. Now, the AX1 is an antenna. It's a little uh, telescoping antenna, AX1 and AX2, two different models. I actually have both of those, and I ordered those a while back, and it took them a couple of months to send them to me. I think they were, like, on pre-order or something. So I got those in. You'll be seeing some videos on those upcoming. But doesn't that look like a really cool transceiver? It kind of comes in this little book thing here. Let's read more about this right now. Overview. We just tackled some of the hardest problems in the HS field deployment, how to get on the air in seconds with an internal ATU that comes both built-in and a multiband WIP and BNC connect random wires. Okay, providing field logging that's truly convenient. Field logging, it just, it, it just little, it looks like to me, it just comes in this little book thing that you can just write down your paper logs for. I'm not big on paper logging. I know a lot of you like paper logging. Nothing wrong with it. I just, it's just, it's just not for me. So, but okay, uh, cool. Uh, providing field, field logging is truly convenient, can, uh, creating the optimal user interface for handheld CW operation because there isn't always somewhere to sit. Okay, so it's CW only. Okay, the results of this or the efforts are the KH1 and ultralight radio will never leave at home. Probably true. With the Edgewood package shown installed below, below or above? Above, I guess, okay. Your KH1 becomes a fully integrated station with fold-out log tray and pin, so for paper logging, plug-in key or paddle, battery, comma, charger, battery and charger, ATU, internal antenna tuner, and a whip antenna. It all fits in the versatile ES20 carrying case with room to spare. So it covers 40 to 15 meters, 6 to 22 megahertz shortwave listening, CW modes, 5 watts on all bands, ATU includes a whip and a high Q inductor for 2017 and 15, 2.5 amp, amp hour lithium ion battery and internal charger. Okay. CW decode and 32K TX log. Okay. So why don't we do some CW decoding with it? Why don't I take this out to a park and look at the decoder? I said this at the Huntsville Ham Fest. I was talking to Kyle. I think I was talking to Kyle about the same thing. And I'm like, some guy standing next to Kyle. He's like, don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, CW guys. I'm not there yet. I'm not as good as you yet. I'll get there. But you gotta let me. I, I I gotta cheat a little bit first. CW decode scan mini pan feature real time clock full remote control full remote control. That'd be interesting. A speaker a RIT. I always call this a ZIT X I T. It's your transmit variable. The receive variable. If someone's a little bit off frequency, the RIT lets you kind of go up or down to make them a little bit sound a little bit better. You, the X I T is they transmit so that you can so if they say well, you're off frequency, you can adjust that a little bit so they hear you a little bit different. VFO lock, light gray case. Here we go right here. So the specs, the weight, about seven ounces. Wow, that's freaking cool. With all options except the bag, it's about 13 ounces. It's still less than a pound. One pound is 16 ounces. Less than one pound with everything except the bag. You can supply it with 8 to 15 volts DC, 50 to 70 milliamp hours on receive with no signal, and a 0.5 to 1.0 amps transmit. So a 2.5 amp hour battery would last you for two and a half hours if you just key the whole thing down and leave it there. You're not going to be doing that when you're, you're tapping CW off and on, off and on, off and on. Super heterodyne receiver with variable BW crystal filter. So those of you who are worried about SDR receivers, the super heterodyne is the, is the sought after receiver, usually, usually. SDR is really good too. So depending on what architecture you want. Attenuator has a 12 dB switchable attenuator. Wow, 12 dB. That's incredible. Most radios will have a 3 or a 6 dB attenuator, a 12 dB. That's pretty cool. Modes is CW upper and lower sideband receive. So it'll receive sideband. Allows cross mode. CW transmit, single sideband receive, S meter and AGC included. That's allows cross mode CW transmit, single sideband receive. So you can do that at the same time, I guess. 
Modes is CW, upper and lower sideband, receive. Transmitter, 5 watt nominal, all bands, 11 volts DC. SWR tolerance is infinite, auto power rollback. Side tone is 500 to 800 hertz. You CW guys will understand what that is. I understand what it is too. Keyer is 8 to 50 words per minute. So Charlie, NJ7 Victor, he will be able to do his 50 words a minute like he always does. Yeah, he's a nut. So, iambic A and B, paddle reverse, hand key mode, 3.5 millimeter key jack can be used with a KHBT1 or other paddles. Three messages, auto repeat for calling CQ, presumably. CQ, CQ POTA or something like that. CQ, your call sign. ATU works with both a BNC jack and a whip mount post. Matches most antenna on multiple bands. Slide switch. ATU works with both BNC jack and the whip mount post. Okay, so it's got two. It's got a BNC jack for external antennas like an infant half wave or whatever any buddy pole coax that has bnc can go to or any coax that has bnc to go to any, any antenna matches most antennas on uh, multiple bands i wish that it had for something like this it would be awesome if it had digital if you could do ft8 with it on to the digi rig i wonder if the digi rig that's made for the kx3 will work with this unit because that'd be cool because you could you could digi rig it so you could put this thing in your backpack and stick the whip up, and then you could hold your tablet with the DigiRig cable plugged in the USB and just be walking down the road, and you could be calling a CQFT8 on a tablet. That See, that sounds fun to me. I know some of you be like, oh, I do CW. You're not wrong, but to me it sounds fun. <laughs> Full remote control and firmware upgrades supplied via USB-A cable. Scanning, text logging, 32 kilobits of recorded text with time stamping. So it has its own logging software, it sounds like. Packages. The Edgewood package is $100 savings. You get the handheld 5-band transceiver, the ATU internal tuner, the keyer paddle, the logbook tray, rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Important to remember it's a lithium-ion battery, similar to your phone battery. So it's not a lithium-iron phosphate battery, but it's a lithium-ion battery, similar to your, your smartphone. Internal battery charger and custom zipper carrying case. Price list and order. Okay, so here, how much is it? How much is it? So you can get the transceiver by itself for $549. I don't think that's too bad. Honestly, I, I mean, for something that Elecraft, Elecraft, Flex Radio, and uh, Tentech, if they ever come back, top-notch, made-in-the-USA ham radio transceivers. You're going to pay for made-in-the-USA because they are so high quality. And I'm okay with that. I am totally 100% okay with that. Some people don't want to pay that much. That's okay. Made-in-the-USA is something to be proud of, so be proud of it. $549 for the transceiver with the Edgewood package. It almost doubles the, well, pretty much doubles the price. So you get, uh, yeah, $1,100 for the Edgewood package, or you can buy stuff. You know, Elecraft is very a la carte with stuff. You can buy the keyer paddle by itself, the log tray, all this stuff kind of by itself. The ATU, that's good. ATU kit. ATU factory installed ATU kit, so you put it in yourself. I put the ATU in my KX3. It was not hard. It's easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Internal battery charger factory installed internal battery charger kit. Same price on those two. Okay. Keyer paddle, log tray, lithium ion battery pack, external lithium-ion fast charger for KXBT2, the pen, replacement whips, zippered case. Okay, so you can kind of a la carte this stuff together, AX1 antenna and all that good stuff. Okay, good. So there it is right there. So who wants to see me buy this? I almost pulled the trigger on the transceiver by itself, but then I looked at that kit and I'm like, that would be fun too. So put a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you are interested, even though it's CW only. And that's a little bit ambiguous, that page that says it's CW, LSB, and USB receive. It doesn't say anything about transmit. That's under the receiver section, of course. But it doesn't say anything about transmit. So it'll receive sideband. You know what? If I bought one, I could test it. 